Hi, welcome to uh, Ready Classroom Lesson 27, Session 3. So today we're going to be looking at how we can solve problems using data or data in a line plot. Now we have um, we have learned all about line plots. We've learned how to create line plots. Now we're going to figure out what in the world would, do we do with the information that we have in a line plot. And so we're going to be working in our Ready Classroom Math Workbooks on pages 563 through 568. So go ahead and turn to page 563 now. So on page 563, it says this. Read and try to solve the problem below. The line plot shows the length of songs in minutes on Ron's playlist. So we know that the title is song lengths. We know that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of data. And then we know that each of those X's is a, a value um, that goes along with the um, what it is labeled um, by these tick marks, which I imagine we're going to need to go figure out in a minute, but we'll get there. Um, and we know that each of those tick marks is in um, the in is in minutes. Ron adds two new songs to his playlist. His new playlist is now 34 minutes in length. What are two possible lengths for the new songs? So, right now we don't know how long his playlist is now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find, well, first of all, actually, we need to label the line plot. We're going to do that first. Then we're going to add all the values on the line plot to find out how long the playlist is right now. So, and so the playlist, we're going to write that right here. And that's, we're going to say how many minutes long is it right now? And then we're going to figure out how many minutes we have for the two new songs, because um, we know the new playlist is 34 minutes long. So let's go ahead and add, all, let's go ahead and do steps one and two first. So for step one, we're going to go ahead and label the line plot. So we know that it is broken into holes, two to three, three to four, four to five, talking about minutes. Now we need to count these tick marks to see how, um, what the scale is of our line plot. So remember, we don't count the two, we start on the next line plot and we only count up to the three. So we have one, two, three, four. So the scale of this line plot is in fourths. So this would be two and one fourth. Here we would have two and two fourths, which is the same as two and a half, and then two and three fourths. Then three and one fourth, three and a half, three and three fourths, four, four and one fourth, four and a half, four and three fourths. So now that we've labeled each of our tick each of our tick marks, now we're going to add the values on the line plot. So we need to add two and a half plus two and three fourths plus three plus another three. So so far we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just double checking. Then we're going to add three and three fourths, two fourths, and then plus four and a half. And we're going to figure out what all of that equals. Now, if I were you, what I would do is first add up all of our whole numbers. So let's go ahead and just add our whole numbers. Two plus two is four, four plus three is seven. 7 plus 3 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, 13 plus 4 is 17, 17 plus 4 is 21, and 21 plus 4 is 25. So we know that we have 25 holes. 
Now, we can't add all of these um, fractions together without converting them to, um, it, to, and you might be able to do it in your head, but we're not going to go there. We're going to just go ahead and make them into eight, uh, into fourths because fourths is the smallest amount that we have. So one half is the same as two fourths plus three fourths plus another three fourths plus another two fourths. So two fourths plus three fourths equals five fourths. Five fourths plus three fourths equals eight fourths and eight fourths plus two fourths equals 10 fourths. So all I did was add together my whole numbers first and then my parts. Now I know that 10 fourths is equal to uh, two because there are, uh, uh, well, it equals two and two fourths, or two and a half. Now I'm going to take this two and a half and add it to 25. 25 plus two and a half equals 27 and a half minutes. So that answers question two. We added, we added up all the values on the line plot, and the original playlist with just these values equals 27 and a half minutes. Now, that doesn't an answer the question though. So he want, he may, when he makes his new playlist, it's now 34 minutes long. So we need to find out the difference between the two playlists. So to find the difference, we're going to subtract. What is 34 minus 27 and a half? Now, I cannot take a half away from nothing. So I need to regroup, change this to 33, and then add two halves. So really, 33 and two halves is still equal to 34, but now I can subtract. So two halves minus one half equals one half and then three minus two equals or excuse me <laughs> three minus seven i cannot do so i'm going to regroup 13 minus seven is six so we have six and a half minutes left at the end and so we're almost there we're almost there this is such a beefy problem what are two now we need to answer the actual question what are two possible lengths for the new songs? So what two values could we add together to get six and one and a half? So I would say the songs could be, and then to keep it easy, I know that half of six is three. So if one song is three minutes long, the other one would be need to be three and a half minutes long because six, three plus three and a half equals six and a half. So the answer to what that question is, is the songs could be three and three and a half minutes long. But there's many, many other possibilities because we could break up six and a half into three and a fourth plus three and a fourth. We could do it as two plus four and a half. We could do it as uh, five plus one and a half. There's lots of different values we could choose for lengths of minutes. So this is just one possible solution. But as you can see, that problem took quite a bit of work to go ahead and solve. Let's go ahead and go to page 564. All right, on page 564, we just see a lot of the informa same information that we just did. This was the original problem. As you can see here, they also decided to label their um, number line just like we did because that is really just the easiest way to, and it really helps us to know what the values of each of these X's or data values or data points is. And then we went ahead and did exactly what they did. We wrote an equation to find the total number of minutes. We added up each of the values of each of the X's and we got that it equaled 27 and a half minutes. Then we wanted to find out the total um, T is the, num the amount of length of time of the new songs. We subtracted the number of minutes, which was 27 and a half from 34. 
So we had 34 and we subtracted 27 and a half and we got six and a half minutes. And then to solve, we just came up with two values that we could add together that would equal six and a half minutes. Let's go ahead and look at number one on page uh, 565. It says, how many minutes was Ron's original playlist? Explain how you know. So we know that it's 27 and a half minutes. We added all the times together and we found the total time. How many minutes um, for the letter T do you do the two new songs um, add to Ron's playlist? So we know that his the new playlist is 34 minutes long. We know that the original playlist was 27 and a half minutes. So we need to find the difference between 34 and 27 and a half, which is six and a half minutes. So we know that it adds the two new songs add six and a half minutes to the playlist. So what are two possible lengths for the new songs? Is more than one correct? Is there more than one correct answer? Well, I talked about that um, on the last page. There's definitely more than one correct answer. We came up with three and three and a half, but there are many different solutions we could have come up with. So we could have come up with many, many, many different solutions, but we decided that three and three and a half were the ones that we were going to use, but we could have used so many more. How did the line plot help us solve this problem? The line, the line plot gave us the length of each song. Now, they didn't tell us. When they gave us our, da our data, they didn't, or our data, they didn't tell us any information more than this scaled number line. But even though the number line was barely labeled, we still knew um, because we could, we could figure out using our benchmark fractions, we could figure out the length of each song based off of the information that was given on the original line plot. How did we use operations with fractions to solve the problem? So first we added all the mixed numbers to find the length of the original playlist. Then we subtracted that total from 34. And then we came up and then we got six and a half minutes and we knew that we just needed to have two different values that equaled together six and a half minutes. So in our reflection, it says looking back at your try it strategies, um, and the picture it and model it, which models or strategies do you like best for solving problems using data in a line plot? Explain. So I want you to write here, the strategy that helps me most when I'm solving problems with line plots is, what is the best thing that you could possibly do on a line plot that's going to help you? What strategy can you use that's going to help you be able to um, get the information you need from the line plot? Go ahead and pause the video here, finish answering number six, and when you're done, you can turn to page 566. All right, on page 566, we're gonna read this problem and then solve the problem. And we're gonna actually use this data for all three of these um, problems. So it says this, Ronaldo um, collects 10 shells at the beach and weighs each of them. He uses the line plot below to display the data. So we have all of this information, we have our data, um, our data values marked by the X's, and we know that the weight is in ounces, and we know that it's talking about how much sh 10 shells weigh. What is the difference between the weights of the lightest and the heaviest shells Ronaldo collected? Show your work. So remember, when we have an, our line plot, we always go from our least to greatest. So in this case, it's going to go from the lightest shell to the heaviest shell. So let's go ahead and circle the lightest shell and the heaviest shell. And we want to know the difference in weights. So we're going to take the heaviest and then subtract the lightest to get our answer. So what is the heaviest shell? That's right, it's 11 and 3 fourths. So we know that the heaviest is 11 
and three fourths. And then we're gonna subtract this lightest shell. Do we know what the lightest shell is? Well, it, right now it's not labeled, so we don't know. Now, because of the work that we've done this week, you probably know what that value is because we know that this is nine, this is nine and one fourth, and we know what goes um, halfway between nine and nine and a fourth. But just in case you don't know, we're gonna count how many tick marks are between nine and 10. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that this is this the scale of this um, number line is one eighth because there is one eighth between each tick mark on this number line. So this value here would be nine and one eighth. But I'm pretty sure you probably already knew that. So we're going to go ahead and subtract nine and one eighth from 11 and 3 fourths. Now, can we do that the way it's written right now? No, we can't because we don't have a common denominator. What equivalent fraction can we make with 11 and 3 fourths that we, to turn it into eighths? That's right, we're gonna change it to 11 and 6 eighths because we know that 3 fourths is the same as 6 eighths. And then we're gonna subtract 9 and 1 eighth from that. So 6 eighths minus 1 eighth equals 5 eighths, and then 11 minus 9 equals 2. So the difference is 2 and 5 eighths ounces. And if you didn't know how I got ounces, I recognized that the, the scale, the line plot was labeled with the unit of ounces. So two and five eighths ounces. Now, number eight says, what is the total weight of the shells that Ronaldo collected that weigh less than 10 and a half ounces? Show your work. So I'm going to come up below. I'm going to find 10 and a half. Now I have one at 10 and a half, but remember we're looking for all that weigh less than 10 and a half ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight the ones that weigh less than 10 and a half ounces. I won't weigh 10 and a half because that equals 10 and a half ounces. So I'm gonna highlight this, these two, this one, and this one. There are four values that weigh less than 10 and a half ounces. So we're gonna add all of those together. So we have 10 and a fourth plus 10 and a fourth, And then this is not labeled, but it's between nine and a half and nine and three fourths. What benchmark fraction comes between one half and three fourths? That's right, it's five eighths. So this must be nine and five eighths. So we have nine and five eighths, and then we have nine and one eighth. So first, I'm gonna add all of my whole numbers together. 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 plus nine is 29. 29 plus nine is 38. So we have 38 holes. Then I'm gonna add each of my fractions. Now, right now, they are not all in the same, they don't not all have a common denominator. So since my smallest denominator, or well, it's the biggest number, but it's the smallest value is an eighth, I'm gonna turn, because I can't change eighths into fourths, but I can change fourths into eighths. So I'm gonna add two eighths plus two eighths plus five eighths plus one eighth. So two eighths plus two eighths is four eighths, 4 eighths plus 5 eighths is 9 eighths, and 9 eighths plus 1 eighth is 10 eighths, which equals 1 and 2 eighths, or 1 and 1 fourth. Now I'm going to add this 1 and 1 fourth to my 38, and get 39 and 1 fourth ounces. You could have also said 39 and uh, two eighths ounces, and that would have also been correct. So either way is totally fine with me, as long as you make sure that you add your holes and your parts all together. So 
Number nine says, what is the total weight of the shells Ronaldo collected most often? So which of these values has the most X's? Which one has the most X's? That's right, this value here has the most X's. What is the value of this amount here? It's halfway between 11 and 11 and a fourth, so we know that that is 11 and 1 eighth. Now, how many 11 and 1 eighths do we have? We have one, two, three. So you can either add 11, and, well, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna add 11 and 1 eighth, plus 11 and 1 eighth plus 11 and 1 eighth. I'm going to add all three of those values together. 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth equals 3 eighths. 11 plus 11 plus 11 is 33. So the answer is C, 33 and 3 eighths ounces. With that, you're going to go ahead and do pages 567 and 568 on your own. If you have any questions, you can always email your teacher.